Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're all doing well, staying safe. We're already over halfway through 2020. The year has felt super slow and super fast at the same time. It's hard to describe. Anyway, today I'm coming online to spend a few minutes to talk about personal leverage as a software developer. So what is a high leverage activity? One example that everyone watching can understand is learning how to code. Let's say you spent two years learning how to code, but it has the potential to unlock a whole career for you. A high leverage task is anything that has a big bang for its buck. So one thing you can do that pays you dividends in times to come. Another example is building a relationship with someone. This is why everyone focuses on networking, but building strong relationships is also a very high leverage task because you never know when a strong relationship can help you in the future. Today, I wanna to give five, five ideas. I'm not gonna tell you what to do. These are just five ideas to steer you in the direction of high leverage activities. The first thing, the first thing you can do, I'm gonna start it off really basic, but please, please, please just fine tune your developer setup and not many people do this. So for example, get really good at using your computer, get really good at using a text editor, any seconds that you can save off your coding are really, really helpful. As you develop over the years, just continuously refine and refine your developer setup. Those seconds, saving those extra seconds and being more efficient with your tools is gonna to give you an edge. On to the next thing. The second next idea I have to steer you in the direction of high leverage activities is to go super, 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 super deep into a framework or tool. For example, I was reading a blog post the other day where somebody, he's made his entire career off being super good at Postgres. These frameworks, a lot of the common frameworks you experience in your day-to-day -day development, they are so common and so crucial to so many businesses out there that if you become highly specialized in one of these tools, if you're so good at Kubernetes or you become so good at understanding Webpack, that is gonna be a very high leverage thing. Third thing I wanna talk about that's also heavily overlooked is that please, please, please gain some historical context over the code you write. What do I mean by historical context? But history is just understanding where the code came from, where it is today, and being informed to make a decision of where it could go in the future. A lot of people don't even look at the git history or the commit history of all the code they're working in. When you're jumping into a code base, don't just dive in and get your feature working. You gotta dive in there, understand it, and also understand where it came from and where it's headed. So really, when you get this historical context, it really makes you very powerful. I wanna take a quick pause here and do a small little recap on points number two and three. Second point I made was get really, really good at the frameworks and tools, right? Get really good at your language, get really good at using Webpack or Kubernetes or whatever tools you're using. The third point I wanna make is that remember to understand the historical context of all the code. Remember, there's a lot of history around every single code base. You're not jumping in and writing everything new. There's history there. If you're working on any significant code base, a lot of people have worked on it before you. So pretty much at any position, anywhere you find up, you're gonna have these two really complicated high leverage things. You have one, the tools and frameworks that a company uses. And on the other side, you have all this bespoke, really custom historical business logic. If you understand both of these things, super high leverage things, but of course, these things are integrated. So if you understand both and you understand how they're combined together, that's a few people can really do this, but if you're one of those people that can understand how it all comes together and how it's all intertwined, that is really, really good for you. All right, let's keep it going. Let's talk about the fourth, fourth idea I had, but this is getting really good at writing. Effective software developers, actually effective people in general are really good at communicating. And that doesn't just mean communicating with other engineers through code. That means talking and getting aligned with different people of all backgrounds, non-technical people. So this is communicating with product managers, project managers, designers, marketers, business people. You have to be able to communicate with them well. And the number one way to do that, one of the most effective ways that also showcases your clarity of mind, which is very important, is writing. 
the next and final fifth high leverage thing you can focus on, which is very simple, but still very difficult for a lot of people is just be a nice person to work with. If you ever get some feedback saying that you're difficult to work with, please take that feedback seriously. People should want to work with you. You won't be given any additional responsibility or any additional money if no one wants to work with you. This is very simple, but yet some people remain very difficult people to work with and you can see those people don't progress as well. But if you're just a good person to work with, more opportunities will come your way. So that's it for the video, everyone. These are my five points, just five ideas, five guidelines to steer you in the right direction of high leverage activities. So again, let's just do a quick recap. First idea was just get really good at your developer setup. Those seconds that you save give you an edge. Second is really go deep into different frameworks. If you're really gonna use you know, a tool like MySQL, for example, really, really understand MySQL. Third is gain historical context over the code base. There's a lot of history with the code. The more history you understand, the more powerful it will become to understand how to extend that into the future. Fourth is gonna be just get really good, focus on your writing. Fifth is just be a good person. Again, when you're doing things, it's really idealistic to say only focus on high leverage things. Every now and then, everyone has to do some shitty work. Every now and then you gotta do some manual paperwork, whatever it is. But for the most part, for the most part, most of your energy should be spent on high leverage things that's going to pay you back more in the future. So these are just five ideas. Take them as you will. These are just my ideas and hopefully you thought it was helpful. Please like the video, give me a comment, ask me a question, let me know what you think and I'll see you next time. See ya.